My last video was definitely a bit on the long side, so for this one, I'm just going to get right into it. These are the treasures that I have unearthed from the depths of Chamblin this month. I have arranged them alphabetically this time so that there is at least some sort of a sense of a method to the madness. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, kicking things off, I've got a hard cover first edition of The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Bacigalupi. This is an ex-library copy, but the only real blemish deeming it so is right there, that stamp on the pages. Other than that, it's in really good shape. I hate unwittingly getting an ex-library copy from someplace like eBay. Stickers on the spines, checkout cards pasted to the back covers. Drives me crazy. Anyway, this is a 2009 biopunk novel that won both a Nebula Award and a Hugo Award, though it did share its Hugo Award with The City in the City by China Mieville. I am pretty excited about this one because I have seen praise stating that it's one of the best climate change novels of all time. So, Zeely Endurance by Stephen Baxter. I have read two Baxter novels, Flux and Ring, both of which are part of Baxter's Zeely sequence, which is a hard sci-fi series that explores humanity's intergalactic war with an advanced Kardashev type five alien civilization called the Zeely over billions of years. Type five, for those of you who are curious, refers to a civilization that is so advanced that they are able to escape their own universe of origin to explore the multiverse. The scope of these books is absolutely staggering. This one here is a collection of short stories set in the Zeely universe. There are still several novels in the Zeely sequence I need to read before I get to this one, but it's exciting nonetheless. I'll likely do a deep dive into the Zeely sequence at some point here on the channel since I don't really see the Zeely books get talked about much here on BookTube, which is a shame because Baxter's work is terrifically clever and imaginative. I was incredibly excited to come across this one at Chamblin. A first edition hard cover of Blood Music by Greg Bear. <laughs> In exceptional condition. Just a little bit of wear on the dust jacket here. Other than that, it's in great shape. I had a frankly unimpressive trade paperback of it before, so this is quite an upgrade, I would say. This is a book about nanotechnology run amok, and it comes very highly recommended by BookPilled. It's very much on my TBR for the year. And All the Stars, A Stage by James Blish. I picked this one up because it was one of the few of his that they had there that wasn't falling apart at the binding. I've talked about Blish a bit on this channel. You know, Blish was among the first to treat science fiction like it was a serious and respectable genre, and he judged his peers work by the same standards by which people judge great literature. He treated sci-fi as an art form with potentially lasting merit rather than just pulpy drivel unworthy of good proofreading or aiming for scientific accuracy. Fun fact, James Blish actually coined the term gas giant in 1952. This is a term that even the average Joe who has little to no astronomy training has no doubt heard in reference to Jupiter or Saturn. With all that said, I have seen that this particular work is not one of his best. It apparently falls into the camp of being about big ideas at the expense of not being about character. I've also seen the criticism that the female characters in this one are less than well-realized. 
nonetheless. It's quite short, so we'll see. The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. Just an acceptable trade paperback copy. I've never read any Chandler, but he comes highly recommended by Claire North, the author of The First 15 Lives of Harry August. North seems really awesome in interviews, really high energy, and she is yet another author whose work I have shamefully yet to read. Anyway, The Big Sleep is a detective mystery and Chandler's very first novel published in 1939. My wife is in love with murder mysteries, so this may just be one that gets read out loud to her. Down Below Station by C.J. Cherry. A pretty good condition mass market. I've not read anything by Cherry, but I hear that this is a good one to start with. 1981 military sci-fi Hugo Award winner in 1982, and in 1987, it was named by Locus Magazine as one of the top 50 sci-fi novels of all time. I tend to enjoy military sci-fi, and this one is quite critically acclaimed, so I'm looking forward to it. Triplicity by Thomas M. Dish. This beautiful little hardcover here collects three of Dish's early novels, 1978's Echo Round His Bones, his 1965 debut novel, The Genocides, and 1967's The Puppies of Terra. Dish was part of the new wave sci-fi movement of the 1960s, along with Samuel R. Delaney. Delaney even name drops Dish in the dedication to Dahlgren. I've yet to read any dish myself, so I am presently contributing to this, but it is my understanding that dish is one of the most criminally underread sci-fi authors. I will try to fix that at some point this year. Absalom, Absalom by William Faulkner, a fair condition modern library college edition I've read some Faulkner, The Sound and the Fury, As I Lay Dying, and A Light in August. I definitely like Faulkner a lot, and he was one of Cormac McCarthy's favorites as well. Funny enough, I was doing a little bit of research about this book for this video, and I discovered that Faulkner actually did a little bit of work as a screenwriter, and one of the projects he worked on was the 1946 film adaptation of The Big Sleep. Small world, huh? Eiffelheim by Michael Flynn. A paperback in decent shape. This one was nominated for a Hugo in 2007. It's a first contact slash alternate history story of sorts that I have only recently even heard about but I have seen this compared to the works of Umberto Eco, so it has certainly piqued my interest. The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. This was actually the very first book I read this year, and it was the book with which I christened my Kindle Oasis. I saw this decent condition trade paperback and decided it was worth adding to my physical library. I'm working on a video comparing and contrasting the plots and themes of the Forever War with Old Man's War, and that should be coming soon. A Voyage to Arcturus by David Lindsay. This is one that I have had my eye on for quite a while. A friend of mine recommended it to me a while ago, but I'd kind of forgotten about it until recently when I saw Moid from Media Death Cult talking about it. Spotted this copy at the mine in relatively decent condition, so figured I'd give it a go. Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. Another trade paperback in good shape. This one comes highly recommended by Clifford Lee Sargent of Better Than Food Book Reviews. This was his favorite book he read in 2023. I tend to trust his opinions, tend to, but Ty's Story of the Eye was a bit too much for me. I've never read any Flannery O'Connor, but this one seems fairly short 
and it being her first novel published in 1952, seems like a good place to start. Gateway by Frederick Pohl. This 1977 novel is the first of Pohl's Hichi saga, which has four sequels following this one. This book won the 77 Nebula and the 78 Hugo, Locus, and John W. Campbell Awards for Best Novel. It comes extremely critically acclaimed. And this is a beautiful, gently used first edition hardcover. I've shamefully not read any poll, so this will be my first. The Sparrow. Mary Doria Russell's 1996 debut novel. It's the story of a Jesuit priest having a crisis of faith during a mission to an alien planet. I've seen this one getting talked about quite a bit here on BookTube as of late. It seems pretty controversial from what I can surmise. People tend to either love it or hate it, so I want to see what all the hype is about. All right, two more. All Flesh is Grass by Clifford D. Simic. This 1965 novel is about a small town in Wisconsin that is suddenly enclosed by a mysterious barrier placed there by a hive mind alien intelligence. It sounds a lot like Stephen King may have found inspiration here. I've talked about Simic before on this channel. I loved his city fix up. It had a lot of heart. And I got Waystation in my hall last month and is presently on my TBR. This one was nominated for a Nebula in 66. So there's another one for the TBR cart. And that brings us to Doomsday Book by Connie Willis her 1992 novel about time-traveling historians who go to the past to collect observational data up close. This is a first edition hardcover in acceptable condition. I don't see this one get talked about much, but it won the Nebula Award for Best Novel in 1992, and it tied with A Fire Upon the Deep in 1993 for the best novel, Hugo. So it definitely seems like a worthy addition to the TBR cart. And there it is, the February book haul. 16 total, a little bit less than last month, but a little bit better quality than last month too, I would say. Have you read any of these books? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I upload a new video every week. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, read on.